you know, she was a local Tucsonan, man. She grew up there, and uh, and we're in, in, in L.A., in Orange County, uh, right around holiday season, Thanksgiving, Christmas, right around then. And, uh, you know, the leaves are falling. And she'd never seen an actual, you know, real size leaf before. Uh, she's picking these leaves up off the ground. I was just amazed, you know. I was like, wow, watching like a little kid discover something for the first time, you know. Obviously, she'd seen leaves and photos and stuff. But out in the desert out there, the only trees are eucalyptus trees, you know, which are flammable. So nobody wants to have them next to their house. You know, and other than that, it's just mesquite and creosote, you know, and the uh, sorrel cactus, right? Cacti. It actually snowed out there a couple times in the in the five and a half years I was out there in the desert. I was at a house in ten acres, man, right by Sawaddle National Park. Now, what park was that again? That was Sawaddle National Park. And uh, at the end of Manville Road, man, the end of the road to nowhere. Like it says on Google Earth, if you uh, were to look it up, it's actually the end of the road to nowhere. Uh, I actually had to go over a mountain range to get into Tucson. And uh, so I was out there, man, in the middle of nowhere. But it snowed a couple couple winters when I was there, which is kind of cool to see snow over blanketing the entire desert. Uh, yeah, that was cool. And on top of the suwaddle cacti. That, uh, it was like, man, you sit, sit there and you look at the suwaddle cacti on the mountain on the sides of the mountains and stuff is pretty cool I mean I was thinking about man if I was really a filmmaker I remember talking to my wife at the time when we were there it's like man we could just you know because all these cacti these uh suwaddle cacti are uh you know all in all these different configurations some of them have like you know a thing coming out this way some are going that way some's like a little nub some's broken and crooked they look like people like expressive you know like they're talking to each other like one cactus might be like what the hell's going on and the other one's be like and the other one might be like don't bother me dude i'm trying to like just be a cacti you know what i mean you know so don't, you know and then another one be like Dude, I just won, you know, and another one would be like, oh, you know, so the, 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 uh, suwaddle cacti are fascinating out there, but nonetheless, if you're born out there and grow out there, you really never see a tree in your entire life. You could be in your mid twenties and just, if you haven't traveled anywhere besides Phoenix, which is about really anywhere anybody goes, Phoenix or Rocky Point, you know? Either way, it's desert, dry, and no trees. So, uh, yeah, so it's kind of interesting. So I can understand when uh, people out in Tucson that I first met, because it seemed to be a high percentage of all the places that I lived, I got the reading like, man, I need to get out of here, you know? And then for some of my friends who were born and raised out there, they got out of there and then they came back. And, uh, but I think those people kind of liked it before they left. Like they went on the, they left on the right foot, you know? And uh, so my take on people that live, uh, wherever you live in the world, uh, in this country, any country, anywhere, you know, you really want to squeeze, make it a positive thing, you know? It's a positive thing. You're on sacred ground, you know, sacred ground. Uh, every word that you speak is like a prayer. It's sacred, right? So, uh, uh, and all of us are kind of supernatural. You know, what does supernatural mean? It still means we're natural. It just means we're kind of super, we're extra. Um, and this planet, this planet Earth, you know, this painting behind me is called MOTU, which stands for, it's kind of an acronym for Map of the Universe. I really like to call it uh, more of a remote control for the universe because when you stand in front of it you know your natural colors come out um, it kind of just blends in with uh, whatever's going on with you 
So if I had a different colored skin, then different, more colors, different colors would be highlighted right now at this moment, reflecting that person's energy, aura, everything about them, more than just skin tone and color. It's about their energy, and that's what this does. It, 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 it activates and highlights your personal energy, um, which is what the water approach method really that I've been uh, uh, developing uh, really since art school back in the 80s is all about. It's about a way that everybody can connect in their own personal way and they, and they can derive their own narrative, you know, so. I don't want to get too much into that, but that's really what's going on there. And so really, we're all supernatural, right? So we're all supernatural. And, uh, and, and uh, people seem to think that like science, like I don't believe in science, or I believe in science, or I don't believe in science, or I don't like the science, or the science is shaky. Science is not a belief system. Science just is. So, you're hearing my voice because it's coming out of speakers, right? Um, that's science. And how uh, sound goes through the air pushes the matter of the air, which is matter. Everything inside this atmosphere on this planet is matter. We're breathing in matter. We're breathing out matter. Air is matter. Um, some even say, theorize that, that human thoughts even have weight to them, matter, right? Um, uh, very little though, you know, so why, that's why the, the power of prayer can be very, very powerful. And uh, it, can, it can change the vibration inside your, inside your soul, you know. But, uh, but we're all spiritual beings, supernatural, and, uh, and what I believe I think, I think that we're all here to be able to connect with each other in a way that we would not be able to normally in our normal supernatural state. We've, we've come to this mortal existence so we can connect with each other in, in, in the form of love, in the form of compassion, in the form of, of all the different things that we can touch each other, feel each other, good, bad, all that stuff wrapped up. Uh, this is a way where we can experience that inside, you know, the linear experience of a mortal lifetime. Um, and, uh, and then our God-given brain is, uh, is, is something that we're, it's a blessing, right? That we got, that, that's God-given, uh, that, uh, that we can use. And uh, so, uh, you know, so that's, that's, that's what that is. Uh, so we're all here to connect with, the, with each other in a supernatural, spiritual way. Um, and so really, that's, uh, that's what I think. And that's, that, that's, that, you know, when I do these paintings, the water approach method, it's really about kind of just filtering out the negativity, the negative energy, and really highlighting the, the, the and reflecting the positive energy that's already out there you know kind of like uh in electronics or another another field you could describe it another way but that's that's what i'm that that's what the goal of the water approach method is for me i imagine i could use the water approach method to really form it in any direction but for me it's about filtering out the negative energy and highlighting you know i got these big outdoor metal sculptures out in california and, uh, you know, when I talk about outdoor art or, or, or building structures or places where people go, like, like a park. You know, I used to live right by Golden Gate Park in San Francisco. And, uh, you know, so there's a lot of people there. And it's, uh, you can just walk out there and bam, you, you can people watch and, and just see, see everything that's going on. And uh, so, so my, my goal was always to be, man, if even someone had like a bad day, or even if I had a sculpture outside a big... Uh